Hey guys, and welcome to our last example for simple coloring. Now this is a super cool image because we, we have a flower, super simple, but we have different colors in the highlights and in the shadows. So I'm gonna show you a great method you can use to color shadows and highlights separately. So let's go ahead and open up our image. Just double click right here. And we're gonna to go to simple coloring 5jpg and let's hit open. Now let's hit F for full screen. And the first thing I need to do is just select the flower. So I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna to go to select color range. And this time, instead of clicking on the flower, I'm just gonna click on the background because the background is way more simple, makes it easy. So let's hit okay there. And now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna create a hue saturation adjustment layer. And let's see, if I change my hue, you're gonna see it's on the background now. I just need to click on my layer mask and hit control or command I to invert that. And there we go, it's changing the color of the flower. Now, you're gonna see as we start to move the flower, we're starting to get some effects that really aren't that realistic. Like right here, that really doesn't look real, right? If I want a blue flower, that's just not really working for me. Okay, same thing over here with the greens and stuff like that. And this happens sometimes when you have complicated objects that have different colors for the highlights and the shadows. Okay, also in this case, the shadows are pretty saturated, way more saturated than normal. And that's because the uh, flower petals themselves uh, allow a little bit of light to shine through. So we've got a, we get a lot of like light here, even in the shadows. That's why we see a lot of saturation. Okay, so because we're getting stuff like this, obviously that doesn't look at all real. What we have to do is sh take care of the highlights and the shadows separately. It's not as hard as you would think. So the key to doing this is located in what's known as blend if. So I'm gonna hit FX down here. You see this FX? Click there and go to blending options. And there we go, we'll pop that right up there. So this is your blending options. Now. You may have seen me do this before because I'm a huge fan of blend if. Here where you see you're in your blending options right here, here in the bottom you see these two sliders, right? One says this layer, one says the underlying layer. You can ignore this layer. 99% of the time you're gonna use the underlying layer. Okay, so the underlying layer, basically you got these two little sliders. If I click and drag this from this, you know, from the left to the right, what's happening there? Well, it's starting to disappear from the shadows, right? Pretty cool. If I go the other side, it's starting to disappear from the highlights. Pretty cool, right? So you can make this layer that we're on visible where the underlying layer is either in shadow or highlight. Now, obviously that doesn't look realistic, right? Unless you're trying to create some artsy cover of a CD or whatever. CDs don't even exist anymore. But what does look realistic is if you hold alt or option and separate these out. So this little guy, there's actually two sliders. You can't tell, but it's two. So you have to hold alt or option. So I'm gonna hold alt or option and click and it starts to separate these out and you get feathering, which gives you a much more natural result. So you get something that looks like that. Basically what this is doing is, you know, cause I'm coming from this side here, I'm telling this not to be visible where the highlights are. Okay. So now this is only visible in the shadows. Check it out. I can change all this. It's only gonna be visible in the shadows. Very cool. Now let's just duplicate this layer because I need an another one for the highlights. So let's click and drag that down to the new layer icon. Now I'm gonna go ahead and label this shadows. This one's gonna be called highlights. So we have our shadows. Now for the highlights, we'll go to FX and blending options for the highlights. You can see it's keeping the same blending options that it did from the shadows. I just want to do the opposite. Okay, so I need to take this white slider. I need to bring that back over there and hold alt or option and click and drag from that direction now. Okay, so now this is just going to affect my highlights. So you can see just affecting my highlights. Boom, boom, boom. And this one is affecting my shadows. So let's see if we can make this blue. Okay, so to make this blue, I want to do my highlights and my shadows separately. So I'm gonna click here, I've got my shadows, right? I'm gonna click here on this colorize button and it's gonna allow me to colorize my shadows, which is super cool. So let's go ahead and we'll find our blue. That looks pretty good. Bring up our saturation, bring down our lightness. Nice like deep blue in there. Okay, and let's go to our highlights now, turn that on and I'm gonna click on our colorize button again, bring our saturation up and we'll go where is blue? There you are. And we'll bring our lightness up 
and our saturation and just kind of like dial that in. There we go. And our shadows, we just need to make sure we dial that in as well. So let's bring that up and then really bring that in towards a nice blue. Bring our darkness down just a little bit. So you can see I'm able to adjust the color differently for my highlights and my shadows. So just the shadows, those are the original shadows and here we're adding them back. Maybe I'll bring my lightness up a little bit. I think that'll look a little bit more real. There we go. And here we're affecting just the highlights, which is really, really cool. Now, if you do something like this, it still looks a little bit flat. So what I would probably do is just add a little bit more information in there. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab a uh, solid color fill layer. Let's just choose a nice light blue. Now I'm gonna go back to my blending options, okay? So let's just go to FX and blending options. I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and say, hey, don't be visible in the shadows, just in the highlights. Alt or Option, grab the same layer mask right there. So we have another color, and then you can change this to something like an overlay blend mode, and it's just gonna kinda blend it right in. So you've got a little bit more blue in there. And we can do something similar. Let's just duplicate that. Let's just do something similar with the shadows. So there we go. I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and drag that from the right to the left. There we go. And now our color, let's just change, you know, down to, there we go down to a nice color like this. And what these do is they just make, you can see this is, the color looks relatively flat. That just adds a little bit more complexity to the color. There we go. So at any time you can go in here and add complexity to your colors. So basically what we did, super cool here, let's just go back to our original guy. So we started off, we colored our shadows, then we colored our highlights separately. We added some more color into the highlights and we added some more color in the shadows just to round it out and give it some really nice color. So this is just a great example on how you can use blend if to make a layer visible just in the highlights or just in the shadows. So when you have something complex that you need to color, you can do it by coloring the highlights separately from the shadows. Okay guys, well that's it for our simple coloring. I hope you've enjoyed this chapter. We'll see you in the next one where we jump in and uh, we're just gonna get more fun and more complicated from here. Thanks so much guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everyone.